position. And I say, looks like he's saying go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. All right, so we're moving from our uh, worship time to table talk time. I just want to lift up a word of prayer as we prepare to do that. And do we lose the mic? Here we go. Father, we thank you tonight that uh, we've had such a wonderful time of worship and your presence is here with us. And these table talks are about you. You're at the center of the table always. And we just come to seek you together in our discussions. And I thank you tonight as uh, Karen here is my guest and I together pursue the depth of what you showed us in. Uh, John chapter 7 this past Sunday that we'll get some greater illumination and understanding for us and for all those who are here and all those who are watching online. So we thank you that your word promises wherever two or more are gathered in your presence, you are in our midst. And we thank you for the evidence of that in our worship tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So our guest on the table talk tonight is Karen Oliver who is the head of our cancer care ministry here at Praise Tabernacle. And she also um, has another role that she fulfills quite well, and that is she edits a lot of the things that get published out of Praise Tabernacle. She's just handed in to me tonight something she's edited for Barbara Perry, a little booklet about being born again that we'll be publishing soon. She's been editing uh, the new book that uh, Todd Smith and I are working on that will be coming out this year. Just amazingly skilled and talented and individual. So welcome, Karen. Great oh, to have you here tonight. Thank you, Pastor. That's very kind. Well, you, you deserve it. Uh, so what I wanted to frame for those of you who did see the service on Sunday uh, and those who didn't especially, our topic tonight is based upon what we saw in uh, the Gospel of John, Chapter 7, where uh, Jesus as he is revealing himself more and more, becomes what I referred to on Sunday as a polarizing presence, even to the extent of within his own family, as that, that uh, chapter starts out with his brothers openly mocking him and uh, showing that they do not believe he is the Messiah. And we just see the polarization all throughout his time talking in the temple, how the Pharisees react to him and, and those types of things. When we are preparing these table talks, we seek the Lord about who might be a guest that could bring some illumination to that. So as I was praying and seeking the Lord, he really brought to my heart to invite Karen to be on because I knew that Karen's faith journey kind of came out of the same stream as, as mine as well, Pastor Josh as well, many others, out of the Roman Catholic background. And I also felt that Karen was potentially, and I think I'm right about this, the pioneer within her family to be the one to go beyond the religious elements that the Roman Catholic Church brings to those who are, are taught through it into a personal relationship with Christ. So let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. You're, you're uh, born and raised Roman Catholic. Yes. Where, were you, where were you raised? Really? Philadelphia, okay. Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Did you go to Catholic schools? Twelve years. Twelve years of Catholic school and graduated from? I graduated from uh, high school? Or, yeah, high yeah, school. Um, was Archbishop Prendergast. The freshman year was West Catholic. So a lot of you people out there know just uh, who you are because there was a lot of us. 976 girls in my graduating class. Okay. Big group. <laughs> Big 2010 school. ahead of me. The year ahead of me was the biggest one ever. Wow. Class of 64, class of 65, 976 girls. And all the way up, my education was filled with a lot of people. We had yeah. girls and boys from first through eighth, and there were 75 of us in that classroom with one nun and no aides. That's a, that's a tough class. <laughs> you need a tough they, nun. <laughs> they knew what they were doing, and that's what I came up under, that old-time original habit, original discipline, and I owe them a lot. Yes, and amen. I definitely want to bring that out tonight. Yeah. In fact, I brought a friend. Uh, you Here got she you. is. Hey, all right. 
All right, see this gal? Sister act right here. This is Sister Mary <laughs> McLeod. And I had an eighth grade nun that looked just like that, and those erasers were very important to her. Yes. That's how she disciplined the boys. She'd bring them up front and beat them over the head with the eraser. I know it sounds ridiculous today, but we were in glory. It was fun. That was fun. He deserved his name was Dominic. I don't know if you're watching Dominic, but you were a trip. And Sister Vivian was wonderful. As far as that editing is concerned, yes. they're the reason why. They taught you the grammar oh, and all the... Sisters of Immaculate Heart of Mary know their grammar inside out and backwards. Yeah. We knew what we were doing before we hit high school because we never saw it again in high school. It was all done in grammar school. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they got us and layered us and really taught us well. Train up a child. They knew that, yeah. right? And then I added to it because I went into an English sequence when I became a teacher. Okay. Because I have a love for it. And it's the one thing I remember. You can put a computer in front of me and t show me 15 times a day. You do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. And 15 times a day, it goes out the window. But anything about grammar, it's a science, and it, it builds, and I love the punctuation and all of it. And you're so. really good at it, and we appreciate that you bring that to uh, what we're doing here at Praise Tabernacle to make sure it's good quality that we put out. And That's the word. Lord, because I was useless. I was like a dinosaur. I thought, you know, but it came out somehow that I did this kind of stuff. Yeah. And he's just been using that, and it tickles me pink because he does use all our gifts. And, and he goes after them when, when you just least expect it. Because I thought I was finished, but I'm having fun. Now, your little nun statuette there, she had a name, what was her name? Oh, yeah. This is Sister Mary McLeod because she, Mary McLeod. she created a, gr a, a big cloud of, of, cloud of um, chalk, chalk dust. Because okay. we did, you know, it was all blackboards then. My nuns looked just like this, except they had the blue habit on the top because they were after um, Mary. Okay. They were Immaculate Heart nuns. And now, this is an interesting thing about my family heritage. My great aunt, my father's aunt, was a nun. Oh. Taught in. Catholic schools, and later uh, in life, I ran into people who had been students of hers, and they told me she was tough. But see, we knew her as Aunt Alice. We just, we, she was just a family member to us, and she was sweet, and uh, she was one of the few people that called me Stevie. Mm -hmm. Always called me Stevie. But, um, and she would give us <laughs> little statuettes and things for oh, yeah. presents, you know what I mean? Oh, we yeah. had lots Holy of them cards. all over the place, yeah, and stuff. <laughs> but, um, there's an interesting thing because you were talking about the class sizes uh, growing up in grammar school with like 75 students in a class and one teacher. And I, just like you, I was born in Philadelphia. Okay. But we moved over to the Jersey side uh, before I hit kindergarten. My sister started kindergarten in Philadelphia, but then we came over and I started kindergarten. And uh, my father looked into the local uh, Catholic school and realized that the average class size was about 75 or 80. Yeah. And then he saw that the local public school, the class size was about 25. Right. And he said, I'm so putting my kids in public no school. Brainer. To which my aunt, his, his aunt, my great aunt, who was a nun, said, they teach communism <laughs> <laughs> in, in the public schools. Oh. You're going to ruin your kids. So we did go to public school. I went to Catholic high school. I went to Camden Catholic High School okay. in Cherry Hill. But we went to public uh, elementary school, and we used to go to CCD classes. Yes. Some of you would know what those were. You go to CCD. You went to public school, but once a week you had to go over to the Catholic school, and the nuns would teach you your catechism right. doctrine. So we were given, right. both given some background in that. So the thing is, like, what happens in, a, in the life of an individual who's brought up in a tradition, and there's nothing wrong with tradition, right? Filler on the Roof did mm, a beautiful song tradition. about tradition. Uh, but, but then we have traditions that maybe limit us yes. uh, to the fullness of what God is desiring to uh, bring about in our lives. So yes. what happened with you that broke you out of the tradition that your family had, had raised you up in and brought you into a, a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ? I was um, in the hospital a lot when I was in my 30s. And um, as a good little Catholic girl, you do not pick up anything, any book that does not have a nihil obstat and an imprimatur. And you certainly don't pick up anything but a Catholic Bible if you have Bibles in front of you. I was over in Shore Memorial. And I, with trepidation, opened the drawer and took out the Gideon Bible. 
And it was then that this thing in the back of my head went, check out the communion. Check out the Eucharist. For me, the heart of the Catholic Church was the communion. Mm -hmm. We were taught that it was the real body and blood of Christ. Only the priest could make that change, transubstantiation. Believed it with all my heart. Taught it in Catholic school. But I read it, and I said, Lord, I want you to open my eyes for this. I want you to, I want you to speak to me. And, you know, it didn't matter what Bible I had. I knew we had 72 books. I knew the non-Catholics had 66. God only knows what those extra books had in them. It uh, didn't matter. So I found, I found the right scriptures, and I read it, and I read it in all the, all the Gospels. I think it's on all four of them. And I thought, cotton picking, this is a remembrance. And then I started looking around, and I'm finding stuff like priesthood of the believer. Mm -hmm. And they ate and took meals and remembered the Lord. And it, it just started clicking, and I thought, uh-oh. And then the Mary thing was the other question. And you can't find much on Mary, and that's, there's a reason for that. Then we got into all the theology, which they, the Lord took me out of piece by piece. It took 24 years to get me completely out of, I was a cradle Catholic. My grandmother was the reason why I went to Catholic school, and my parents were divorced when I was 11, but my grandmother kept me going in the Catholic church. She was limited because she was divorced, and she never took communion, and I, I couldn't believe it because she was the one that... So I think that's why the communion thing was part mm -hmm. of my curiosity. My grandmother was a, a good Catholic woman, and she never went to communion because of the divorce. And coincidentally, I was rejected from the convent because of my parents' divorce. It was in my heart to be a nun. So you were, you were told that that precluded you from entering the convent? Absolutely. Wow. My parents are divorced and remarried. I would be emotionally immature. I am not what they want. In fact, one nun used the term damaged goods, wow. which was not a very good thing for a 17-year-old to hear. Mm. And uh, she said, well, maybe if you come back in four years uh, and see what you're, you know, how far you've come, maybe we'll consider you. But... Um, I could have gotten bitter. I was upset. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things happened that could really f mess around your head. Yeah. Um, I only wanted God. I wasn't worried about this other stuff. I was beginning to realize as I grew up, these are people. These are people with all the same problems that I have, maybe more. And uh, I just wanted God, and I wanted to find him where I didn't, when I swallowed him, and that communion dissolved, he wasn't gone. Because mm -hmm. that's all I wanted to do was have him. First hand, have him. And I didn't know how to do that. Nobody ever taught me. And that's why I love him so much, because he taught me. He's mine, I'm his. Amen. There's nothing like it. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're a Catholic or not. You can be that. You can have that. In fact, that's why I'm here, just to tell you. Amen. Don't worry about your labels. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just get Jesus in your heart. Give him your whole life. It's not a thing in my head. I had it in my head for many years. See, you have to understand, I'm a recovered bulimic person. Mm. And I kept that away from the Lord. I said to the Lord, yes, I receive you as my savior, but don't touch the bulimia. Mm. Let me have that. Wow. There's another reason why I'm here, I guess, to tell you that, because I didn't know if that was going to come out or not. But that was the piece that kept Jesus from being in here. He sat here. I could talk about him. I could even help you get saved, but I couldn't change because I didn't repent. When I was talking on Sunday about this, I used this concept because I was using the word polar, polarization, that 
I was using an example of people at the South Pole, I would refer to it, they're kind of um, living their own lives, doing their own thing. And then there's a polar shift and they come to the North Pole where it's all about Jesus and all about God. Now, when you make that dramatic a shift, the people who are know you at the South Pole and are used to that you, they don't always react very favorably to the new you, the new North Pole, Karen. And we saw that uh, even with the Pharisees, how they were treating uh, Nicodemus, who was open to what Jesus was bringing. So what kind of reaction did you get from various people in, in your life as you started to say, you know what, I'm not about this tradition. Uh, I respect it. I, I honor the good things that, that it gave me, but I need more than this. So I'm going from this to this. And what kind of reaction did you get? Not so good. Not so good. No. Okay. All of a sudden, my husband got real Catholic. <laughs> Didn't uh, matter before. <laughs> uh. Now he's going to be Catholic. So I thought, okay. But no, it was more than that. Um, the real heart change came, but I lost my best friends. Two of to one girl I grew up with, and another um, I met later on in life. She, they were both at my wedding, my maid of honor. And um, my maid of honor was the hard one. I couldn't believe her reaction. I, I couldn't wait to tell her what I found. And I went to her house for lunch, and her little boy was six years old or so. I had my Bible with me. So she brought, brought it up, and I said, I, I really, wait till I show you what I have found. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. And I no sooner took my Bible out of my purse and put it on her kitchen table, and her little boy took my Bible and threw it on the ground of the kitchen. And I looked, and she didn't correct him. She didn't say anything. Oh, we don't believe in that stuff, says this little guy. Wow. I really didn't know what to do. Yeah. I couldn't believe this was my girlfriend. I thought I knew her. I had no, I had no, I, I, I wasn't prepared. She completely stopped our relationship over this. Only the fact that I left the Catholic Church, the friendship was finished. I've never heard from her again. I've even tried calling her. Rejection. I called and talked to her husband. Rejection. He's okay, but she's not, so I left it. You have to leave it. When people won't forgive and forget and come along, you've got to move on. Yeah. Um, In-laws, mother-in-law was not so sure. Uh, she liked me. We had a good rapport. And many, many years later at the kitchen table, Ruthie was born again. Praise God. And she said to me after she was finished, she says, Karen, I don't have to leave my church, do I? I said, no. Amen. It was good. So yeah. I guess there are two extremes. That's why I use the term pioneer, you know, for, for your role. And some people have had that role in their families. They yeah. are the first one. And by God's grace, they can become the first of many yeah. who, who move past uh, ritual uh, and religious observance into a personal relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. But um, this term that we were using on Sunday, polarization, mm -hmm. that uh, you get an extreme reaction. You do. Uh, when, when Jesus is your Lord and Savior, when he's your Messiah, and other people don't want him to be recognized in that way or don't, don't see the same thing. And I guess it feels threatening to people that it all is. of a sudden you're saying, I have, what I have is real. Yes. And it kind of makes them feel like then that means what I have isn't real. That's right. And nobody wants to be well, threatened or challenged in their mm -mm. beliefs that way. Mm -mm. Um, and, and it doesn't really even matter what, what tradition we're coming out of. You know, my friend no. Barry, who's sitting out here, he comes out of a Jewish tradition, mm -hmm. was raised in a Jewish home, is a Jewish by heritage, and uh, took that step to know Christ as his Messiah. And so people come out of all kinds of things. We know that in Islam, people who uh, leave Islam to come to Christ, you know, uh, they're, 
shunned, they're attacked, uh, all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. uh, even people who have no religious affiliation, background, or interest can all of a sudden just get like, they do. I don't need anything to do with you because right. you're all of a sudden into that thing, that right. Jesus thing. And one of my dear friends, and he's passed on uh, uh, in the meantime, but when I first was trying to communicate to him about Jesus, uh, he had moved out of state and I was emailing with him. Mm. And when I started telling him about you know, my faith in Christ and things, he emailed me some words that just stunned me. He said, I'll always be grateful for the friendship we had. That's all. And I said, no, you can't talk about our friendship in past tense. You know, we're still friends, you yeah. know, but it was so hard for him to want to still be a friend to the new me, to the yeah. born again me. And I, by God's grace, we were able to work through that as friends. And That's I, good. I'm, I'm so happy about that. But sometimes, as you said, with your maid of honor, it just doesn't happen. No. And, and uh, or, or we could say this, it hasn't happened yet. We could. <laughs> and we can hope that, you know, in God's great I mercy that that even if you're not the person to reach her, somebody might. Right. Um, you know, if we look at in our own lives, you know, just that simple thing of opening a drawer in the hospital and picking up a Gideon's Bible, you know, mm -hmm. that wasn't a random coincidence. Mm -mm. That was God's perfect will and plan for your life. Yeah. And uh, his scripture says clearly he doesn't desire that any would perish, but all will come to repentance. And he's working and he's working. He's working behind the scenes to reach people in whatever way possible. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, let's talk about this a little bit. You you find yourself in a position where uh, people who used to accept you, love you, want you to be part of things are no longer inviting you to things or no longer like even within your family let's talk about that in particular because you know you got your family of origin and you're also saying art's family was also of a catholic, catholic. background so yeah. they were probably very happy when you got married oh, very. and you probably got married in a catholic church oh, and very, that was yes. wonderful Big one. but Big then wedding. you kind of pursue a different level of connection with jesus yeah. and what kind of pushback do you get at that point well um uh, since they were all up around Philly area, and we were the only people down here in Jersey, we were already isolated. Right. And that worked out really well <laughs> for everybody. Because they, you have to remember the children were born and there were, you know, there was baptisms. Yes. This, this wasn't instantaneous. This happened after I got married. Sure. And uh, so they came down for the baptisms and, uh, it hadn't happened yet, but when it did, they stopped coming. Mm -hmm. They stopped coming, and the excuse was always the weather. We had a lot of hard winters. Um, then it was the then it was the shore traffic, mm -hmm. and then it was well the kids are annoying. Um, it was always something, and then I was a weirdo anyway. Um, they never knew what I was going to say or do. Um, I'm not shy, never was, and I wanted to tell them about it. And I think what really broke the ice was when our sister-in-law was diagnosed with cancer at the age of, what were we, 34. She was 34, brain tumor. Gosh. I couldn't hold back. There was no way. I had to give her the gospel. I, you know, I, and she told me she's already born again. She shocked me. Well, praise God for it that. It was really cool. Yeah. And the rest of the family's like, oh, both of them now, you know, sure. But it, it's okay because the, the seeds are planted. I just tried to be nice about it. I tried to be loving. I tried not to get upset. Um, it was the least of our problems. It really yeah. was. Uh, the pushback, mom never bothered. She was just glad I was going to church somewhere. Um, she didn't really push on it. My mother couldn't care less. She was out there doing her own thing. And uh, f funny thing, she got born again. My dad got Praise born God. again. Um, That's awesome. They all, there's a whole mess of them. My stepmother uh, and our grandchildren are, you know, well on their way. Um, but I'm, I'm still waiting for our kids to get into the groove and start living, mm -hmm. living it out. That's the hard part. That pushback is the worst pushback. 
because we're in the present, and they've seen the difference in their father and me over these last several years of what Jesus has done in our lives, and we're not the same people. We're nowhere near the same people. And now they're going through their trials and tribulations, and we're saying, you got to have the basics down. You can't go this alone. Take, just take your Jesus and work with him and let him, just let him lead you to where he wants you to go, especially now with all this going on. And I know, I know he's doing it. I can see it step by step, and that's where the impatience comes in. You know, I just have learned to just back off and back out and pray. It's all done on my knees. Keep my mouth shut, because this talking doesn't do people any good unless we're invited to, like this table talk. There's no way I would be sitting here doing this. No way <laughs> on this Facebook thing. No. This is God. This is for him. Only he could give me the strength to do it. I had no idea what we were going to say. It doesn't matter. There's Catholic people out there that need to know. I don't care how hard it is. You make sure you're born again. Make sure you give your, your whole heart and soul to your Lord Jesus and let him take you. Maybe you'll be a pioneer within your Catholic church because there are things happening there too. I mean, things are Amen. changing. You know, we're, we're here at Praise Tabernacle. We're part of a charismatic independent church yeah. that was founded by folks who had encountered the Holy Spirit in the yes. Catholic charismatic movement. Yes. If it were not for that movement that came through the Catholic church, I guess it was probably in the 70s. Yep. And um, so some families that, that were part of the Catholic church in our area uh, kind of branched off and began yep. this church. Yep. Now, here's an interesting thing. I think it's important for people who might be uh, listening or watching this to understand we're not here to bash the Catholic Church oh, because no. No, we're no, no, uh, no, no. Uh, both grateful for the foundation that we were given yep. in the faith. And I think one of the things that gets problematic for people uh, who are coming from any, let's say, background or, or, or tradition, when you start talking to them about something new, is as if we're trying to say, you need to leave what you have mm. and go and do this instead. Yeah. No. And as you say, what we're really saying is, just just go to Jesus. Yeah. It's not about a new tradition or changing clubs or whatever. No. And I had an interesting experience where when I first came back to the Lord, and that's the best way I can describe it, because after graduating high school from a Catholic high school, I went into a period of just unbelief. Mm. Um, I was hanging out with the Hare Krishnas. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, up in Germantown yeah. and doing that nonsense. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they do a lot of singing. Do a lot of interesting <laughs> things there. And, uh, and so, you know, I went and then went and just kind of into blatant atheism for a while. And so when I came back to faith in Christ and, and just gave him everything, I only knew one thing, and that was my Catholic tradition. So mm -hmm. I did start going back to Mass, mm -hmm. but then I also met some people from this church, Praise Tabernacle, when it was in the little building uh, across from ShopRite. Yeah. It's now some kind of Italian market. It was Chubby Subs and Pizza. It was uh, Heavenly Price. Health. It was all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. But at one time, it was Praise Tabernacle Church when I first started attending there. And uh, so I would go to Mass and then go to Praise. And some folks, you know, with all good intention, kind of gave me a hard time about that. Mm. But some of the founding members of this church, mm -hmm. Swifty Allegretto, Jim Harrington, yep. they took me aside and they said, listen, because they were, they, were, they were coming out of Catholic Charismatic yep. Movement. They said, listen, we did the same thing mm -hmm. that you're doing. Mm -hmm. We would go to Mass and then come to this new thing mm -hmm. that we were doing here at Praise Tabernacle. And they said, yep. you go ahead and keep doing that as long as you need to. it feels like what you're supposed to do. And if it feels like it's not what you're supposed to do anymore, then this you can is, stop doing it. It's very cool. And so it wasn't like you have to quit that team yeah. to be on our team. No, that's right. You know, that's and I gradual. think that's important because, yes. you know, we're talking about establishing relationship with Christ. Yes. We're not, there's, there's no value in dragging people from one form of religion to right. another form of religion. That's right. 
That's a sideways transfer. We're looking to elevate people into a higher level of, of a walk with Jesus Christ. And yes. I think so much of it comes back to what you're saying too, Karen, about waiting to be invited into a conversation. You know, you, you're not going to kick doors down. Uh, you know, I read a thing one time that said, nobody ever came to Christ by losing an argument. Amen. In other words, nobody That's talks right. somebody into it by no. beating them down with, with doctrine. Yeah. And people are loved into the kingdom. The Bible says it's right. the kindness of God that, that leads to repentance. Yes. And we've got to be representatives of that kindness, which means talking to people respectfully yes. and, and listening yes. to what they have to say because they have a voice too. Very much so. And to be able to respond and with, with respect and say, I hear what you're saying, and that's, that has value to me, what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. Could I share some things that I feel are of value to me? Mm -hmm. Not can I knock down your points yes. with better points, right. but can I share with you as one human being to another some things that are significant to me yeah. that make a difference? It does. I have a Maddie Allegretto story. Ah, uh -huh. One of the matriarchs of this church. It was the Catholic Charismatic Renewal over in Ocean City that I got into. Wow. I was part of that for a real little bitty time. Okay. And Maddie, when I first came here, you made sure that I found, no, it was Roger Perry, mm -hmm. Pastor Roger, made sure that we connected again. Mm -hmm. She was sitting over there. And she said, Karen, I remember you. Now, we are going back to the late 70s, yeah. early 80s, tops. She says, I want to tell you a real quick story about what happened with you one night. She said, and I finally have a chance to thank you. I'm thinking, what is she talking about? She reminded me that I came one night to one of their meetings with a pack of holy cards. Okay about the little flower who was a uh, St. Teresa of sure. Lisieux, okay? She was my favorite, mm -hmm. and I had a big devotion to her. So I thought, I'm going to help these people get straightened out. I'm going to bring my holy cards. <laughs> this is the bring true Bring them back into the fold. It's a true story. <laughs> I mean, we are sitting in an auditorium in a Catholic church. So um, I got up and gave a spiel about the ca the, the, this nun. It was, I was very, very on fire about, she was a nun, she was a, she was a Carmelite nun. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, I sat down and I was finished and left my holy cards. And of course, Maddie grabbed them before anybody could get them. <laughs> but you know what she told me? She said, the whole time I was up there talking about this, the Catholic priest from this church was over there checking them out to make sure that they weren't doing or saying anything that was contrary to the belief. And there I am going on and on about the little flower. So I got them through their little... You got them their stamp of approval. I, I got it. And she said <laughs> God it was used the timing. You. Yeah, yeah. So incredible. Yeah. And I said, look at God. He has such a sense of humor. Yes. He's funny. Absolutely. So yes, Maddie is part of my little DNA too because... Um, there was more to Maddie than I'm going to even talk about here, but she was very important to me. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. Her and Jane Teeny. Absolutely. Another big name yep. in the past. Foundational members of this church. Yep. Uh, who I think helped set a tone here because of uh, so many of them coming out of uh, Catholic heritage, a tone of, of respect and yes. honor for that heritage that I think is significant you know, to me, the, some of the things that really drew me to Christ weren't doctrinal issues. And you could, like you say, start looking at things like the doctrine of transubstantiation, yeah. which I've heard directly from the mouth of Catholic priests who said, we don't believe that anymore. Really? But others who obviously still do. Still do. Yes. But, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, that's okay. We, we, sure. we go back to and say, okay, what does the Word of God say? That's probably that's right. the, one of the biggest differences that, that, that walking in a, in a faith relationship with Christ, biblically based, says, I don't want to know what the doctrine that's been passed down through the ages, I want to know what the Word of God says. Yeah. And if it, that's 
in line with the doctrine, then fine, the doctrine's valid. But if the, if the doctrine doesn't match the word, then the doctrine's got to go because the word's going to stand. Right. That's you right. know? But for me, I think the things that were more instrumental in my life in terms of wanting what I saw that some other people had mm -hmm. and that God used in my life to, to say, there's more. Mm -hmm. There's just more than this. Because, you know, uh, I, you might not know this about me, but uh, I was, there was a thing that swept through the church in the late 60s, the Catholic church in the late 60s, early 70s called the Folk Mass. Yes. You know, where they got away from the organs the and so forth in. and the guitars came in. Guess who was playing the guitar? You were. Me. Yep. Yeah. So Perfect. I was in the Catholic church playing my guitar because yes. that's where I was being spiritually fed. And that yes. really made a difference to me. But it deal. wasn't satisfying enough. That's the whole thing. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 I knew there was more. And when I wasn't getting the more, I just gave up. Yeah. But God didn't give up on me. That's right. He never does. And so some of the things that, that changed for me were just seeing other people, and you were talking about this going with somebody in your family going through a bout with cancer, yeah, and seeing how people handle things mm -hmm. when they have a real connection with God, when they have a real faith. Yes. And I had lived for a brief period of time in Maine, and when I was in Maine, I taught at a school there, and I met some other folks. I was young at the time, uh, and uh, met some other young folks, and kept in touch with them when I moved back to New Jersey. And one of them. Uh, had gotten married. One of the lady teachers there had gotten married. And I got a letter from her when I was living in Summers Point. And at this time, God's still working on me. I'm not going to church anywhere. I'm not interested in mm. things about church. But I get a letter from her, and it says this, um, that she had, had uh, been pregnant, and I was excited about that. But then as I read on, she said she lost the baby. Mm. And that really hurt me to read that because we worked in a school together, mm -hmm. and I knew how much she loved kids, and I knew how much she wanted to have kids of her own. Yeah. So she's telling me she had been pregnant, and then she lost the baby. So my emotions went from high to mm -hmm. low, and then to I don't know how to feel, because the next thing she said was, the only way I'm getting through this is because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, wow. and he's carrying me through this. Wow. And those words on that page were like a foreign language to me. Wow. Like, what does that mean? Right, right. That, that Carrying you. you know, what? like I knew this Jesus stuff from when I was in Catholic school, but you're talking about it as if it's real yeah. and that it's making a significant making difference, a difference in one of the most painful times of your life. That's right. I couldn't ignore that. That's right. I couldn't shake that off and say, that's nothing. It was something. It meant a lot. And it was one of those pieces yeah, that God yeah, that used in my life uh, to bring me to an understanding that you can have that too. Mm -hmm. You can walk in a way that no matter what you're going through and no matter how much pain you experience, I will be with you. Amen. And w when I saw that on the page, it was like I was wrestling with it. Yeah. Because this was not a person that I thought didn't have a good intellect. She was a smart person. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was generally writing off people of faith as not too brainy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. but uh, so, you know, that's, I think, mm -hmm. where really the rubber hits the road, mm -hmm. and that's why I think, you know, we have our best opportunity to reach others with the reality of our faith when we talk from a place of what it's really meant, what, it's, what we've yeah. gotten through. Look, you, you shared tonight, and you said, I didn't come here expecting to share this, but you shared, I struggle with this bulimia thing. Mm -hmm. And Christ has delivered me from that. That's right. That's real. Yeah, it's real. That's what somebody can say, wait a minute, I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with that. And yeah. that Jesus who set you free from that, do you think he could set me free from this? Absolutely. And that's where we, we're not arguing anymore about doctrine. We're no. not trying to persuade people no. that my version of, you know, yeah. the Christian faith is better than yours. It's just simply this, my Savior is real, mm -hmm. and, and you can know him in a real way, too. Absolutely. And that's really the bottom line. That's what it's all about. Yeah. All that polarity doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Because people can move very easily, very quickly, because we, ha we have done it, mm -hmm. from the South Pole to the North Pole. Yes, Out sir. Out of God's great love, he just reaches down and says, I want you here. That's right. And I'm going to bring you here, and I'm going to move circumstances in your life to make that happen. 
And we, as, as those who are believers, who as uh, one of my favorite scriptures that we've been taken out of darkness into his marvelous light, mm -hmm. we don't have to go down with a crowbar and pry people out of the no. South Pole. No. We can love them out of the South Pole. That's right. Though. That's Holy Spirit work anyway. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Boy, when we, uh, both of us, Art and I were baptized in the Holy Spirit 14 years ago, Pastor Andy's. Yeah. Wham. That was a whole nother deal. Yes. That was steroids. <laughs> that was up the volume that I highly recommend it for everybody. Let me ask you this. When you go to that next level, you, the volume goes up mm -hmm. to 10, and then you turn, you find it's got a, it's got a 15 on there and you oh, go yeah. higher than you ever knew. Did that in and of itself, taking it to a, a level of moving into the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the charismatic realm, did that also get some pushback from any sectors of people you knew, or was that pretty well accepted by then? It didn't even matter at that point. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Art and I were together. We were on the same page. We were at the same place. I said, Holy Spirit has got us on the right spot now, and our marriage took off. I yes. mean, wow, we're talking 19, yeah, no, 20, 2006. I was thinking about all those dates today. That's what they have to see. They have to see what Jesus has done for the Olivers. Yes. Amen. He's done that. He has taken my sins and as far as the east is from the west. That's polarization for baby, you. Baby, that's the polarization you want. Yeah, amen. That that's is awesome, That's the good Karen. stuff. He has forgiven us. You know, this business of I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. Yeah. Uh, I had my father say to me one time, God rest his soul. He's born again. He's okay. He's in heaven. Mm -hmm. But he did. He said to me, Karen, you're going to have to prove it. If you're sorry for what you did, you're going to have to prove it. And we're adults. Yeah. And I thought, well, my daddy in heaven doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, right? Yeah, amen. So I'm waiting on forgiveness from a lot of people. I hope it comes in this lifetime, but if it doesn't, well, I, th I know it'll come if they get Jesus in their hearts. Amen. That's a, that, that much I know. I know we'll come to uh, complete reconciliation with everyone. Yeah. Because that's, that's God's he's, heart. He's the, there's where your polarization melts. Yep. Amen. You know, I don't care what the world thinks. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. It, I don't know what we're going to have. It's getting nuts. Yeah. Life's getting crazy. Yep. I but mean, our God doesn't change. Hey, hang on. He's got us. Amen. You know, he's just got us. I just have to tell you real quick what my pastor said when I left the Catholic Church. He loved me. Karen, all I can say is you're completely out of your mind and when you come back to your senses, you'll come back. That was how they handled it. They chalked me off as mentally ill. That was the, that was the clergy. <laughs> they might not be too far from the truth, but. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I mean, that's what they said about Jesus. We talked about that on, uh, on Sunday, that uh, not only did his brothers mock him and, and yeah. uh, says didn't believe in him, but we saw in one of the other versions, uh, of the gospel, they said that he had lost his senses. Yep. And uh, that's okay if, if it seems that foreign, that mm -hmm. unusual, that difficult to comprehend to somebody that, that we are living in a way that they just can't figure us out. Mm -mm. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. that's, how they, that's how they can handle it. Yeah. That's how they make sense of it. Yeah. Because if they go past that, that means they're going to have to look at themselves. Yeah. And maybe take a thought to, oh, well, maybe there's something to this. Yeah. And I think what brings that, brings people to that place more than anything else is consistency. Yeah. Because when, when, when our walk matches our talk yeah. over a long, consistent period of time, yeah. it's hard for people to ignore that. That's where you have it. You know, and we're not walking in perfection. No. But we're walking in consistency. Correct. And we're walking in honesty mm -hmm. and humility and a willingness to admit when we're wrong. Yeah. And a willingness to admit we don't know everything. No. And we're willing to learn too. So, 
Well, thank you. You've mm -hmm. been a wonderful guest, as I well, knew you, you would be. It's always fun <laughs> to spend time with you. <laughs> thank you, And Pastor. thank all of you for being here, mm -hmm. for watching tonight. We, uh, we really appreciate that. Let's just uh, close in prayer, and let's just lift up those who are dear to our hearts, who have not yet uh, come to a place of knowing Jesus in the way that we've come to know him and, and that we would desire for them to know him as well. So, Father, we just thank you tonight. Uh, Karen and I can sit here as people who are raised in the tradition of the Roman Catholic Church, got much of foundational truth from that experience, but found that it wasn't the fullness of what you had for us. And so you showed us that there's another level of personal relationship, a born-again relationship with Jesus Christ that took us from tradition to trueness of relationship. And then you took us both to a place of saying, and my Holy Spirit lives inside of you, will baptize you with his presence and change you radically. And we thank you for that, Father. And we pray for those that we know and love who haven't yet experienced that fullness. We're not better than them. We're more blessed than them right now. And we pray that they would receive that same blessing that we have found, just like others prayed us into the kingdom and prayed us into the blessings of, of the Holy Spirit. We pray for those that we love, that they would find you and know you in the deepest and fullest way possible. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Karen, thank you again. And folks, uh, tune in tomorrow to Pastor Josh's devotional. And uh, Sunday morning, we'll be here at 9, 1030 live with some great worship again. And uh, Pastor Josh will be preaching. And then uh, if you can't come and join us live here, we'll be live on the Internet as well. So thanks for joining us, and God bless. You take care.